Hi, everyone. Welcome today's, to today's webinar. On behalf of the National Transit Institute, I welcome you and thank you for participating. The National Transit Institute develops, promotes, and delivers training and education programs for the public transit industry in the United States. Today's webinar is Transit Asset Management with a focus on tribal populations. We are pleased to have as our presenter today Russell Glenn from the Volpe Center. Russell is a community planner in the Transportation Planning Division at USDOT's Volpe Center, where he supports research, policy development, and program implementation work across USDOT agencies, including FTA, FHWA, and NTHSA. Additionally, Ms. Doni Smith is with us and will be fielding questions. Um, Ms. Doni has 20 years' experience in transportation civil engineering. She manages Federal Transit Administration's Transit Asset Management, TAM, program. She joined FTA's Office of Budget and Policy in 2014, where she is focused on writing and publishing the TAM final rule, as well as developing TAM program implementation tools. Today's session will consist of Russell presenting his material, followed by a question and answer session at the end. You can participate in the discussion by using the chat pod that is located in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Um, I will be monitoring this chat during the presentation, and I'll save your questions and note what slide they occurred on so we can address them at the end. And also, as I mentioned, uh, Ms. Doni will be in the chat box uh, helping out to that end as well. If you have not already printed out a copy of the presentation that was emailed to you, you can click on the handout document in the upper left-hand corner of your screen, where it says handouts up there. And immediately under that, there are two links you can copy and paste in your browser. Um, they're not clickable, so you have to copy and paste. And those will lead you to the handouts as well. I will now turn the presentation over to Russell. Russell? Thank you, Lori. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about Transit Asset Management, or TAM, with a focus on TAM for tribal agencies. Just a quick rundown of what the presentation is going to cover. We'll talk about TAM background, just give you some um, background information. We'll talk about TAM plans, including individual and group plans. We'll talk about performance management and reporting. And we'll walk through a TAM plan example and point you to some technical assistance that you can use uh, in developing your own TAM program. So to start off, we want to note that this presentation is focused on tribes due to the unique operating environments many tribal transit agencies face. So with this in mind, the purpose is to introduce the TAM regulations and requirements in a manner that is approachable and easy to understand. We recognize that some of you may not have participated in previous FTA webinars or trainings on TAM, and so this presentation will provide the necessary background to help you get started. Um, for those who do have some knowledge of TAM and are familiar with the rule, this presentation will be useful for understanding specific requirements and how to meet them. So at the end of this training, uh, you'll have great, gained some familiarity with asset management and the final rule. Um, you'll understand general TAM concepts. Uh, we'll get some knowledge on TAM plans and the specific requirements that are relevant to tribal agencies. Uh, you'll learn about monitoring and reporting and have a greater awareness of the technical assistance resources that are available to help you reach compliance. Uh, so we have a quick poll here. We're going to ask, have you communicated with a state DOT or FTA regional office on transit asset management? Have you been talking about it? Um, just want to get a sense of the audience's awareness of TAM. So I'll give it a second. So it's looking pretty mixed right now, although only 11 responses. All right, so we'll just uh, move on, I guess. And it's good to know that um, it's a good mix of people, I think. This presentation is sort of built for that mix with, again, general concepts, but then also some specific information 
for those who may already be actively engaged in TAM. Great. So what is transit asset management? Uh, TAM is a business model that uses the condition of assets to guide investments in order to keep our transit networks in a state of good repair. TAM is a requirement for all transit providers, uh, including tribes, that receive funds from FTA and was originally mandated in the Moving Ahead for Progress in the 21st Century Act, known as MAP 21, and reauthorized later by the Fixing America Surface Transportation Act, or the FAST Act. Um, we'll go into the specific details of the rule later, but it's important to raise the point that even if TAM wasn't mandated, um, there's a lot that can be gained from sound asset management, and it's widely regarded as a good business practice. You can probably start to imagine some of the benefits better asset management would bring to tribal agencies, and I've listed a few here. Um, it's useful in providing a clear picture of investments and allows more information to justify funding requests. Um, it allows agencies to develop better estimates of future asset management and asset maintenance and replacement costs. Um, it promotes data-driven decision-making and consistency in how assets are managed across the agency and over time. And it can help alert tribes of potential deficiencies in their fleet through um, vehicle and facility data. So the TAM rule provides tribal transit agencies a path to those benefits. Um, we'll structure the rest of the presentation around the rule covering some general provisions of the rule. We'll talk about TAM plans, performance management, uh, as well as the record keeping and reporting requirements. A primary purpose of the TAM rule is to help achieve and maintain a state of good repair for the nation's public transportation systems. The rule requires transit providers to balance competing priorities to expand service, operate existing service, replace and maintain assets, and ensure that operations are safe for their employees and the public. The transit asset management rule applies to all recipients or subrecipients of federal financial assistance under 49 U.S.C. Chapter 53 that own, operate, or manage assets in the provision of public transportation. The TAM rule does not apply to recipients of planning or research grants and cooperative agreements that do not provide public transportation. So we have another poll here, and it asks, does your agency only receive tribal funding from FTA, um, or do you receive a mix of funding? Again, the results look actually not quite as mixed as last time, uh, so it seems that folks are mostly receiving a range of funding from FTA, though there are some participants who receive only tribal funding. So now we're going to talk a little bit about state of good repair. Um, so if the goal of transit asset management is to keep the transit network in a state of good repair, what exactly does that mean? Uh, the definition of state of good repair is the condition in which an asset is able to operate at a full level of performance. Um, and an asset can be considered in a state of good repair if it's able to perform its design function, if it does not pose a known or unacceptable safety risk, and its life cycle investments have been met or recovered. Uh, just for reference, you can turn to subpart A of the rule for definitions, including this definition for state of good repair. And there is also a fact sheet for the rule that includes some key definitions, which you can be found on the FTA Asset Management website, which we'll talk about more later. So now that we've covered the purpose of the TAM rule and its applicability to tribal transit agencies, we're going to talk about TAM plans, which are sort of the central component of the rule. Uh, we'll talk about the various elements that make up the TAM plan. We'll talk about group plans, um, which are pretty relevant for tribes, as we'll, as we'll learn later. 
So all tribes must designate an accountable executive, regardless of whether they're developing their own TAM plan or participating in a group plan. And the tribe's accountable executive may be the tribal councilman, it may be a CEO equivalent, or another C uh, senior staff member. Uh, the title of this person is irrelevant. So the accountable executive basically leads the agency towards compliance with the rule. The executive makes decisions about the allocation of resources to address asset condition and improve the state of good repair. So accountable executives are responsible for carrying out TAM at their agency, for coordinating with group TAM plan sponsors, if applicable, and approving TAM plans. Tribes can decide to either develop their own TAM plans or participate in a group plan, group plan which we will discuss later in this section. A quick uh, note about the time frame of developing your TAM plan. All initial TAM plans must be completed no later than October 2018. The TAM plan must be updated in its entirety at least once every four years and cover a four-year time horizon. An update of the TAM plan could coincide with the cycle for the relevant MPO or state transportation improvement programs if possible. A TAM plan may be updated at any time during the four-year period, but it's important to note that it should be amended during those four years if there is a significant change to the asset inventory, to the condition of assets, or the investment prioritization that was not anticipated when the TAM plan was initially completed. A transit provider or group plan sponsor can submit a request to FTA to extend its implementation deadline provided that the provider or group plan sponsor is making good faith efforts to complete its initial TAM plan and proposes a new deadline that would be subject to FTA approval. So consistent with the TAM rule, all recipients or subrecipients of FTA funds that own, operate, or manage assets used to provide public transportation are required to implement TAM plans. And the rule proposes two different tiers of transit providers with different sets of requirements for their TAM plans. And these are Tier 1 and Tier 2. All tribal transit agencies are considered Tier 2 providers and thus must meet the Tier 2 requirements. Tier 1 agencies operate larger transportation systems and have additional asset management requirements. Uh, we recognize that tribal agencies are smaller and do not approach that 100 vehicle threshold that would make them Tier 1. Uh, in fact, the largest tribal reporters to NTD have fewer than 40 vehicles in their fleet, so tribes are across the board Tier 2. Um, it's important to note that the term small provider may sometimes be used in technical assistance documents when referring to Tier 2 agencies, um, and that's just something to be aware of. As we'll discuss later on, FTA has developed resources for small providers that tribes may want to reference when developing their own TAM plans. So as Tier 2 providers, tribes must comply with the following four TAM plan elements. They are the inventory of capital assets, which is a register of capital assets and information about those assets, the condition assessment, which is a rating of the asset's physical state of those assets for which the agency has capital responsibility, which we'll talk about shortly. Um, it's a description of a decision support tool, which is an analytical process that assists in investment prioritization and estimates capital needs over time, and the investment prioritization, which is just a, a list of projects or programs to manage or improve the state of good repair of capital assets. So those are the four key elements, and we'll run through each of them on the next slides. So the first TAM plan element addresses the question, what do we have? and this will take the form of a list of all your capital assets. The asset inventory should be sufficient to generate accurate, comprehensive data on the number and types of capital assets a tribe owns, operates, or manages, and this includes leased assets and assets that are operated under contract. Tribes may use existing inventories that are already collected, like existing rolling stock and equipment reports, to fulfill the inventory requirement. Um, and this definition includes all assets that an operator uses in the provision of public transit 
regardless of ownership or whether they were purchased with federal funds. So for example, if you lease vehicles from a state DOT, you must include those vehicles in your TAM plan inventory. The asset inventory needs to be organized at a level of detail that's consistent with the level of detail in the provider's program of capital projects. The second TAM plan element addresses the question, how are my assets doing? Depending on asset category, the condition assessment will either be a rating of good, fair, or poor, or be identified as a percentage of residual life. Condition ratings should be at a level of detail sufficient to monitor and predict performance of inventoried assets. Condition assessments may be collected at the individual or asset class level, and it will be up to the transit provider or group plan sponsor to decide which method is most appropriate. Condition assessments may also include vulnerabilities to natural or climactic hazards. For example, a facility may be 20 years into its 50-year useful life, but if it's located along a river that's in a floodplain, for example, this should be noted in the TAM plan to inform decisions about potential rehab, risk reduction, or replacement strategies for that facility. Note that while your inventory must include third-party assets, you only need to assess the condition of assets for which you have direct res capital responsibility. Um, and those are the assets that you own, jointly own, or that you are responsible for replacing, refurbishing, or repairing. Uh, this table is here for reference. You don't have to try to look through all of it now. Uh, more information about determining direct capital responsibility can be found on the Frequently Asked Questions page of the FTA Asset Management website. Transit assets for Tier 2 providers are broken down into three categories, and each category is broken down into a number of classes. Not all assets required to be inventoried must have their condition assessed, only those where there's a direct capital responsibility. This table shows the relationship between the assets that must be included in the inventory and the assets for which a condition assessment must be completed. For the TAM plan, FTA only requires a condition assessment that generates information in a level of detail sufficient to monitor and predict the performance of capital assets. This is slightly different from the performance measures requirement, which we'll talk about later. It is expected that asset condition will be evaluated every year for equipment and rolling stock, and at least every three years for facilities. The third required element documents the decision support tools that your agency uses to estimate capital investment needs over time and assist in investment prioritization. The purpose of this element is to document how you actually do asset management. The decision support tool defines a process that helps organize data in a way that supports decision making. For example, the TAM template for small providers can be used for data collection and includes built-in modules for use as decision support tools. The FTA Transit Economic Requirements Model, or Term Light, is another resource that builds decision support tools based on an agency's asset inventory data. The tools can be specialized software, but they don't need to be. It can simply be the process your organization uses. It just needs to be documented in your asset management plan. So some examples of decision support tools might include a policy to prioritize specific types of projects, such as a fix-it-first policy, or you might weight specific factors like safety impact on reliability or customers impacted, and you might have a spreadsheet-based analysis. It's really a wide range of different tools that just need to be documented. Additional resources and examples of decision support tools can be found on the FTA TAM website. And here we link to the TAM template for small providers, which includes a decision support tool. The fourth and final element required for tribes is the investment prioritization. This entails a ranked list of proposed projects and programs 
ordered by year of implementation over the four-year time frame. A TAM plan must include an investment prioritization that identifies projects to improve or maintain the state of good repair over the horizon period. Investment prioritization is an essential step in instituting TAM principles. The prioritizations must ad adequately consider the identified unacceptable safety risks and accessibility requirements. The rule does not prescribe a method for making investment decisions, but does require that due consideration is given to those projects for state of good repair that pose an identified safety risk. And the rule requires that the time period for the prioritization be four years, and that the prioritization reflects the fiscal constraints of available funding. TAM policies and strategies can assist transit providers in identifying priorities that address their goal. FTA understands that you got to balance the need for operations, maintenance, and expansion projects, and this is a local determination and recognizes that the methodologies and analysis used to make these decisions will vary. Now that we've spoken about the core elements that make up a TAM plan, let's discuss group plans. Um, tribes that do not wish to develop their own TAM plans can participate in a group plan. So we have a third poll question here, and it asks, is your tribe planning to participate in a group TAM plan? It looks like an overwhelming no on that poll question. OK, well, we're going to talk about group plans. Um, and that may not change whether you decide to participate in one. Um, but they're designed to collect TAM information about groups of smaller agencies. And group plans may benefit smaller agencies with limited resources, as the sponsor of the group plan will take on data analysis and reporting work that would otherwise be the responsibility of the individual agency. However, group plan participants do give up some control over elements of their TAM program, such as the ability to set their own performance targets. Group plans will be compiled by a sponsor, which means a state, a designated recipient, or a direct recipient that develops a group TAM plan for at least one Tier 2 provider. While it is presumed there would be a funding relationship between the group plan participants and the group plan sponsor, it is not required. The tribe's accountable executive must provide each relevant group TAM plan sponsor with written notification of a decision to opt out of a group TAM plan if a tribe is developing its own plan. So that's something that would be uh, relevant to all of you who said that you are not planning to participate in a group plan. And if a tribe is eligible for multiple group plans, it must choose to join one plan. Tribes that are direct recipients of 5307 funds may be included in a group plan at the discretion of the group plan sponsor. And in the case where the tribe only receives 5311C funds directly from FTA, the state DOT is not required to solicit the tribe's participation in its group plan. However, if the tribe requests to participate, the state DOT must accept the tribe into its group plan. So that was discussing state-sponsored group plans. Um, but a tribe can also serve as the sponsor of a tribal group plan that includes other tribal agencies of similar interests and experiences. Unlike other group plan sponsors, a tribe can both sponsor and participate in this kind of group plan. The participants of a group plan are still responsible for completing the asset inventory and conducting condition assessments, and will need to share this data with the tribal group plan sponsor. As we noted earlier, sponsors generally take on data analysis and re reporting responsibilities, including elements such as the investment prioritization tool. But the nature of this agreement will be determined locally by sponsors and their participants. Just to cover the requirements for a group plan sponsor, as a sponsor, a tribe must develop a group TAM plan for participants. It must comply with the requirements of the rule for a TAM plan when developing a group TAM plan. 
It must include a list of participants in a group TAM plan. It must coordinate the development of a group TAM plan with each participant's accountable executive. And it must make the completed TAM plan available to all participants in a format that is easily accessible. There is a group plan sponsor workbook that's available on the FTA TAM website that provides further detail on identifying participants and developing group TAM plans. So if you are a tribe that is thinking about sponsoring a group plan, that is a very useful resource. Now we'll move from TAM plans into the performance management and reporting section. Um, we'll talk about what performance measures are, we'll talk about the TAM data that needs to be reported to NTD, the National Transit Database, and we'll talk about how the term useful life benchmark is different from useful life. The three different asset categories relevant for tribes will use different preset performance measures. The performance measure for equipment and rolling stock is the percent of vehicles that have met or exceeded their useful life benchmark. For example, if an agency is able to replace its vehicles before they reach their ULBs, the performance measure will be very low. If agencies are not able to replace their vehicles as planned, then the performance measure will increase. For facilities, the performance measure is the percent of facilities within an ascent class rated below condition three on the term scale and that's where one is poor and five is considered in excellent condition. All of the performance measures are designed with the goal of having low values. As the age increases or the condition of assets deteriorates, the volume of the performance measures will increase. On this slide, we'll delve a little deeper into target setting. So targets need to be set annually for each asset class for the coming year. Group TAM plan sponsors set one uniform performance target for each asset class, and group plan targets will reflect, reflect the group condition. You have three months from the end of your fiscal year to submit performance targets for the following year. So for example, if your fiscal year 18 runs from July 2017 to June 2018, you must submit targets for fiscal year 19 to NTD in October of 2018. More information about performance target reporting timelines can be found on the FAQ page of the Transit Asset Management website. Note that there is no reward for making a target and no penalty for missing a target. It's also important to note that the differences between condition assessment requirements and performance measure development. The performance measures are not reflective of the entire asset inventory or necessarily all of the asset condition assessments included in the plan, only those specific asset classes that are required by FTA. So for equipment, targets only need to be set for non-revenue service vehicles. For rolling stock, targets are set for revenue vehicles and the facilities performance measures include maintenance and admin facilities, passenger facilities, excluding bus shelters, and parking facilities. So these are different from the asset condition classes. Guidance for calculating and setting targets for facility and infrastructure condition is available on the TAM website under the performance management page. So we've talked a bit about useful life benchmark, used it a couple times now. Um, and the definition of useful life is the expected life cycle of a capital asset for a particular transit provider's operating environment or the acceptable period of use in service. We want to highlight that this measure differs from the typical definition of useful life used for FTA grant programs which defines the minimum useful life expected for the assets. So the ULB contrasts that definition because it's a maximum. It reflects the age at which maintaining an asset in a state of good repair no longer makes sense. 
FCA has calculated default ULBs based on a model of when an asset would meet 2.5 on the term scale. ULB is the mathematical threshold of state of good repair, where anything beyond may be operational, but is now part of the SGR backlog. Agencies may, may use these default ULB values or develop their own. Default ULB values can be found on the default ULB cheat sheet, which is viewable under the Resources tab and then Tools on the TAM website. A transit provider may opt to set its own ULB, taking local conditions and usage into consideration. Agencies need to have customized ULBs approved by FTA. In cases where the custom ULB differs significantly from the default ULB, the agency may be prompted to justify that it's not a typo or submit uh, any other justification. If FTA accepts the NTD report, then the customized ULB has been approved. Each entity developing a TAM plan must submit an annual report for asset management to the NTD. And this submission includes projected targets for the next fiscal year, as well as condition assessments and performance results. A narrative report is also included, and it's a description of the change in condition of the transit system over the course of the year, as well as progress toward achieving the performance targets set the previous year. So the first narrative report will be due within four months of the end of the provider's fiscal year, and then narrative reports will be due annually after that. Um, there is an example narrative report that's available on the TAM web website, and again, that's on the resources page under Tools. Um, and we'll have links to all of this uh, under the um, Technical Assistance section. For group TAM plans, the descriptions will be for the entire system and progress towards the uniform performance targets. So the group plan narrative report will include all members of the group plan. Group plan sponsors will report on behalf of all the participants. Asset condition and the narrative reports will be submitted to the NTD once the agency's initial TAM plan is completed starting in 2018-2019. So TAM planning works best if it is done transparently and collaboratively. It is important that tribes maintain records supporting their TAM plan and share data and priorities with their partner agencies. By collaborating effectively, agencies can ensure that the needs identified in the TAM plan and the reasons for prioritizing different assets are understood and addressed by funding partners and other stakeholders. So a note about certification, uh, TAM plans will be self-certified by the accountable executive. And that means that agencies will agree to meet the requirements of the TAM rule, and TAM will be included as part of the triennial and state management review processes uh, conducted by FTA. However, FTA will not be checking the contents of TAM plans. It will only review the plans for completeness. Oversight for TAM will begin during the next round of the Trano Review and State Management Reviews for fiscal year 2019. All agencies that will have received reviews, all agencies, sorry, will receive reviews by the end of the fiscal year 2021. Oversight will focus on the completeness of the TAM plans. There are no requirements for the quality of the content of the plans. The enhanced review modules, which are implemented after at least one full cycle of the triennial and state management reviews, will go a bit more in depth on the completeness and coherence of the plan, but still not directly address the quality of the content. There is an oversight checklist that is available on the TAM website that can be used to make sure your agency has met the basic requirements of the rule, and we link to it here. 
So where do you go from here? This timeline is meant to illustrate the general schedule of events following the publication and effective date of the TAM rule. Um, so completed TAM plans are due October of this year. Uh, during 2019 to 2021, transit providers are required to submit an annual narrative report to the NTD that provides a description of any change in the condition of its transit system for the previous year and describes the progress towards meet, or the progress made during that year to meet the targets previously set. So the TAM package of deliverables you, you or your sponsor need to submit annually to NTD includes annual condition assessments, the performance targets, and a narrative report. All right, so finally we'll cover some of the technical assistance available from FTA that can help tribes develop TAM plans and comply with the rule. The TAM plan guide for small providers offers a comprehensive walkthrough of TAM plans in an Excel environment and includes an example TAM plan creating used the, created using the template. The TAM plan template for small providers can be found at the link on the screen. And you'll see some screenshots here of the guide as well as the Excel-based template. There's also a webinar that walks through the uh, template, and that's viewable on the YouTube link. We also want to highlight the Asset Management Guide for Small Providers. The guide uh, presents a framework for TAM tailored to tribes as well as other small providers and includes a master template for developing a TAM plan. The guide describes assets, practices, and requirements applicable to small providers and again provides a template and offers strategies and tips that can be applied to increase efficiency of day-to-day -day operations and maintenance efforts. Tribes should also be sure to visit the TAM for Tribes webpage on the FTA website. And the link to that is on the screen. The TAM for Tribes page features a collection of the essential resources for tribes, many of which we've referenced over the course of this presentation, and will help assist you in complying with the rule. The page offers more background on the TAM plan to help you get started, provides even more detail on group plans, including FAQs that are relevant to tribal transit agencies, discusses reporting requirements in depth, and provides links to additional resources curated specifically with tribal needs in, in mind. So this is really supposed to be a sort of one-stop shop for tribal transit agencies that are working on asset management. And we have a screenshot here. Again, it's at transit.dot.gov slash TAM slash tribes. And if you go to the TAM homepage, you'll see a link to the TAM for Tribes page in the left navigation bar. So the information we talked about today covers the basic, basic aspects of implementing your TAM plan. And the presentation will be available online for your reference. Uh, if you have any further questions after the Q&A session, please be sure to visit the TAM website reach out to your tribal points of contact at the regional offices, or you can reach out directly to Michidoni Smith, who manages the TAM program and who will now be taking any questions you have. Um, yeah, so Mish. Hi, thank you, Russell, and uh, hello to everyone on the webinar. Um, as Lori mentioned in the introduction, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the chat pod. I'm going to go over a couple of the questions that came up during the uh, presentation. And if you have any additional questions, please do add them into the chat pod now. Lori, did you have any additional um, instructions? No, no. Uh, you, you covered everything I was going to say, so thank you for that. Um, there's nothing to really, uh, if you want to go over the few that were asked, 
already. Uh, there wasn't there wasn't a lot that came in yet, so hopefully people won't be shy and we'll start typing now. Okay, great. So there were a couple of questions that came in from Mr. Henry. Uh, the first one was about a template. He asked if there was a template, and as you can see from the conclusion of the presentation, that there is a small provider and group plan sponsor template that is available at that link that's in your chat pod, but also available on the resources page in this uh, presentation. That is an Excel-based template where you can upload or input your inventory, and it will help you to develop your targets and um, a compliant TAM plan. There's also a small systems and group plan provider guide book that goes along with that template that I would recommend that you take a look at. It's a fairly short document um, which helps understand some of the underlying principles of that template. There's also a presentation that NTI hosted last year that's available on a YouTube um, channel. Uh, I think you can get to it from the NTI webpage or uh, Russell had provided that direct link in this presentation that can walk you through using that template. I will also direct you to the group plan workbook which talks about some of the trade-offs in participating in a group plan versus doing an independent plan. It is uh, written from the perspective of a group plan sponsor, but it could be very useful in determining whether or not you want to do your own group plan. I must say I was very surprised by the overwhelming number of uh, attendees that intend to do their own uh, TAM plan, but I applaud you for taking on that um, responsibility. The uh, next question that came in through the chat pod was also from Mr. Henry. He asked, uh, would that be the state plan? Uh, Lori, do you remember which slide that came in on? Um, it was fairly early and I was making note of it and I saw that you answered it. So I'm, let me flip back here so it must have that's okay. Like I, was... I believe it was the group plan slide when we started, uh, when Russell started introducing the concept of a group TAM plan, and I believe uh, clarification was asked if that was the state plan. And I just want to clarify that a group TAM plan is traditionally offered by a state DOT, but not exclusively offered by a state DOT. So. It is not necessarily the state plan, but it often it oftentimes is. Yes, the group TAM plan. Okay, thank you for that clarification. And another question, Mr. Henry, you have a lot of questions. I like that. Um, <laughs> you asked uh, who can review the final plan to ensure that you're in compliance. Um, it. I want to be clear here that. The TAM plan is not submit to FTA um, for approval. It is reviewed by FTA in the oversight process. So in a triannual or state management review, your TAM plan may be requested to review compliance and completeness. Um, if you would like a technical review, you can contact your regional point of contact. Depending on what region you are in, you can identify who that TAM point of contact is by going to the TAM webpage. I believe it's the Getting Started page. There is a picture of all of the FTA regions. You can identify your location and also your point of contact. You may already know your tribal point of contact for FTA grant programs, and they can also put you in touch with the TAM point of contact who would be willing to provide you or to share with me the 
national program manager your TAM plan for a courtesy technical review. Region 4, yes, so your point of contact would be Guan Ying Li, uh, excuse me, Guan Ying Lei or Paris Or. So Mr. Hansen has asked, is the $50,000 threshold per asset or a total asset assessment? I'm assuming that you are talking about the equipment asset category threshold for inclusion into your TAM plan. Now this is a very nuanced description and don't think I'm trying not to answer your question, I'm just trying to be accurate and complete. The $50,000 is related to how you put it in your capital plan. If your capital plan lists it as a grouping of items that are over $50,000 in value, then you will identify it in your TAM plan as a $50,000 equipment group. If they are independently listed, then they will be less than $50,000 and then would be under the threshold for your equipment asset category. I'm not sure if that was thoroughly confusing or only partially confusing, so let me see if I can <laughs> add a little bit more confusion to it. Um, <laughs> The reason we added this, just to give you kind of like a behind the scenes look here, the reason we added this uh, dollar value at all was to make sure that supplies and small equipment didn't get wrapped up into your TAM plan. So the purpose of the TAM plan is to make sure that those large dollar items are accounted for in your state of good replay, excuse me, state of good repair strategic approach. So equipment that is under $50,000, either as a grouping, if, for instance, if you buy a bunch of radios or you buy uh, some sort of um, um, I, maybe some, oh gosh, now I can't think. I, I think um, in the rule I use the example of solar panels. Uh, if you buy them, in a grouping that's over $50,000, then you will keep track of it as a group in your TAM plan. Does that make sense? I'm not sure if this is uh, coming out clear enough, but I am going to work on it and I'm going to make this clearer. Yep, good. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. Henry is asking, is typing another question, and I do want to invite anyone else that's on this webinar please feel free to add your questions to the chat pod. Um, it, there, there are a lot of nuances in the TAM regulation, and uh, for tribes in particular, I want to make sure that we make this as clear as possible. And so that's why we are reaching out uh, and having focused uh, webinars towards tribes. So Mr. Henry asks about uh, meeting the deadline for NTD and can they get a consultant to do it for us? So I'm going to extrapolate from this. Um, the NTD deadline is four months after the end of your fiscal year. If you don't submit a complete report, you won't be able to submit your report to NTD. So it's pretty important to have a complete NTD deadline. I think what you might be referring to is the TAM deadline, which is the October 1st uh, deadline. And if you miss that deadline, it's still incredibly important and it will uh, affect your ability to certify your grants for fiscal year 19. However, your NTD report will affect your ability to submit your NTD report, which affects your um, uh, funding. Um, so I'm pretty sure that that's, the, that's a pretty big priority for everyone. Um, the TAM inventory information and target information is a required part of your NTD report. So you'll want to make sure that those are complete. 
As far as getting a consultant to do it, I don't know if you mean your TAM plan or your NTD report, but I don't believe we have any restrictions on consultants supporting uh, FTA grantees in meeting compliance. Uh, some of us may not have the expertise. I understand that, and that's also one of the reasons why um, we are targeting this, uh, these uh, webinars and trainings towards tribes. And yes, Mr. Henry, uh, that is where I was going exactly, is that that's one of the reasons why participating in a group plan is a, that's one of the benefits of participating in a group plan is that a lot of that administrative and um, reporting is leveraged across the entire group versus independently um, held by one or the one person reporting. And some of those pros and cons are discussed in the group plan sponsor workbook that I mentioned a few minutes ago. Um, some of the trade-offs and some of the uh, reasons why you may determine uh, you'd want to participate in a group versus not wanting to participate in a group. I'm not going to pretend like it's all wonderful to participate in a group, but there are some benefits to participating. So you, m you make the request to the state to participate in their TAM plan. That is correct. If your state has not reached out to you, if you are either 5311 only a tribal recipient or you're a 5307 uh, FTA recipient, you may need to contact your state DOT and ask to participate in their group plan. Um, or I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to phrase that a little bit differently and ask what the requirements or what they are expecting for participation in their group plan because you may determine you don't want to given whatever the requirements are for participation. So there are both benefits and drawbacks to participating in a group plan. So I, I keep wanting to, I, I want to be very clear about that. Uh, one of the drawbacks is that the, the group plan sponsor sets the targets. They also set the investment prioritization. There's no requirement that you follow the investment prioritization, but it is expected that the process of creating it is based on strategic goals, and all participants are expected to approve the group plan. So by participating in a group plan, you're really saying, I agree with and go along with the priorities of the group plan sponsor. And that's something you really want to understand before you sign up to participate. The benefit is that you don't get required to do all of the administrative reporting and going through the, um, the um, putting together of the plan. You still have to provide your information to the sponsor. So it's really a trade-off, and I want you guys to go into that eyes wide open. All right, I think I've harped on that enough. Let me see what some of these other questions are. Lori, did I miss, did I miss some questions while I was on my um, soapbox there? <laughs> uh, no, I, I think the, no, <laughs> I think they were all uh, responding to you when you were speaking, so. Okay, so Frank did ask about the NTD analyst accepting the plan and would not review or ask for more clarification? Yes. So your NTD analyst will, in fact, if you have either incorrect or I'm going to say odd, I'm using air quotes, odd information in your, um, in your reports, they will ask for either clarification for, first of all, I think it's verification, then clarification, then justification. I think that's kind of like the process that they go through, but I'm only, I am not the NTD person, so please don't quote me on this, but um, they just want to make sure, one, it's not like an error in typing in information. Then they want to make sure that they understand what you intended to put in there, and then if it still seems out of the ordinary, they may ask you for uh, justification 
for the information that you provide. But your NTD analyst would be the person that tells you that, hey, you're missing this information, you cannot submit your report. Or, hey, this information doesn't follow the formatting uh, requirements in the NTD manual, you'll have to conform to the, the manual or things of that nature. Uh, I would recommend it as the state get. I'm not sure what that says, what that means. Uh, oh, state get 15% of the top from the administrative. Mm, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, it's, it's an individual decision, and the way that the rule was written is it's up to the participant to decide. So you have 100% of the control of determining whether or not you want to accept the terms and conditions of participating in any group plan that you are eligible to participate in. You can only participate in one of them, and it's for a four-year cycle. So do know that it will be a period of time that you need to participate. Um, but other than that, I mean, I think it's also a great way to uh, coordinate and build relationships and also uh, learn about uh, some of this asset management um, without being 100% on the hook for it. So that, that's my two cents. This is not, you know, policy. That's just kind of like I'm giving you some things to think about. Uh, All right, so like someone else is typing. Someone else is typing. Awesome. I'm, that's wonderful. Having a great relationship or a good relationship with the state transit office oftentimes can it really be very uh, beneficial. Are there any other questions? I don't see anyone typing. Um, do you want to have some closing remarks or? Sure. Um, thank you, Lori. So I, again, want to thank everyone for their time this afternoon. And I also want to uh, point out that uh, we will be holding a few more of these uh, transit, or excuse me, tribal-focused uh, webinars, as well as developing additional tribal resources. If you have suggestions or needs or identified gaps in our program, please contact your regional TAM point of contact, your tribal point of contact, or me directly. There's also a TAM email if you want to anonymously send information, and that's TAM, capital T, capital A, capital M, at DOT.gov, where you can send uh, suggestions uh, on resources to develop and also um, uh, any sensitive um, information you want to share. Uh, so with that, I want to close this uh, webinar and uh, thank you all for your attention. Yes, and just one more quick thing. Uh, again, thank you everyone. And uh, you should very shortly be receiving um, an evaluation from NTI about this webinar. If you could just take a minute or two and fill it out, we would be uh, greatly appreciative. So thank you. Thank you to Russell. And thank you, Ms. Doney. And everybody have a great Tuesday afternoon. Thanks. Bye.